Hello, Forsyth, teachers and students. This little march into history is just for you. The year is 1775. What is the year? 1775, and trouble is brewing. Give me a drum roll, please. recognize that tune. I know they play it on Barney, but it is Yankee Doodle. Well, before we go further with Yankee Doodle, I need to say that it is the song that helps us understand our country and its freedom. The instrument I just played looks like a flute, doesn't it? But it's a little too small for a flute, and it's made out of wood. How about this? This is a flute made out of silver and gold, and it will have a different sound. Different sound. Well, so what is this? Is it a recorder? Mm. Now this is a recorder, also made out of wood, but you play it like this. sound quite the same, does it? This is called a fife, and it is the original instrument that played Yankee Doodle during a particular war, the war that set up our freedom. It was a war for independence. Does anyone happen to know how many colonies there were? If you don't know, all you have to do is count the stripes on the flag. How many are there? I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen colonies fought for freedom. What does freedom mean? We will find out through Yankee Doodle. These thirteen colonies were going to fight for their freedom against the biggest, the most powerful country in the world. In fact, they thought they were better. So they made up the song Yankee Doodle to make fun of people. Is it ever a good idea to make fun? I don't think so. Should we try singing Yankee Doodle once? Give me another drum roll. So Yankee Doodle went to town riding on a pony. He stuck a feather in his hat and he called it macaroni. Yankee Doodle, Yankee, did not mean just people in the north. It meant all the people in the how many colonies? The 13 colonies. It also meant coward. And Doodle meant stupid. So the British are making fun of the people in the 13 colonies. They're saying, we know because you live in the 13 colonies. We're better. You are stupid cowards. And you ride to town, not even on a horse, on a pony, and you stick a feather in your hat and you call it macaroni? What was the macaroni? Take your right hand, put it across to your left shoulder, and wiggle your fingers. The macaroni was the decoration that British officers wore on their uniforms. Why was it called macaroni? Because it was shaped like this in yellow? No, because only certain boys were allowed to be officers. You had to have a certain color of skin, and you had to be born to a rich in money, mummy and daddy. Those rich boys were called dandies or macaronis. That's how that decoration got its name. Well, George Washington thought, why should you have to be born to live your dreams? Born to certain parents, rich parents? No, everybody is born with the right to live their dreams. You should never not have the opportunity because of 
who your parents are or where you live. So George Washington took Yankee Doodle. He made it his theme song and he said, we are fighting for freedom. And what freedom means is that you don't have to be born to certain parents. You need to work hard and then you will be able to follow your dreams. George Washington loved the fife. And now I am going to go into George Washington's <clears throat> army. And I'm putting on a red coat. Is anyone alarmed by that? What color of coats did the British wear? They wore red. But I'm in George Washington's army. Why am I wearing red? Washington was so clever. When his men had uniforms, they wore blue with red trim. Officers like George Washington would wear a blue coat with gold trim. George Washington knew how important music was. So, in the heat of battle, when his officers had to find the musicians to give the signals to tell the army what to do, he put them in the opposite colors so the officers could find them. That's why I am in a red coat with blue trim. They often wore these hats, tri-corner hats. Well, you could make one of these if you wanted. You get a pattern and you make one that looks like this. And then you make another one that looks like that. And then you make a third and you staple them together. The real hats, of course, look like this, and they served a very good purpose. You see, it would keep the rain off your head when you were on the battlefield. Of course, if you were also very thirsty, you could tip your hat and get the water. So it was also a water-saving device. Forsyth, I hope you enjoyed this little march into history and someday I look forward to coming to visit you in person. Thank you, have a great day.